Verse 16, my beloved is mine, and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. My beloved is mine, and I am his. Oh, by the way, where in the, where in this book does it show the second coming of the Lord? And in what season does it come? That was brought up to me. Uh, boy, how did I see this guy? I saw him someplace. Oh, I know, we were in the grocery store. Mr. T, we were checking out, I don't know if it was at Mark's, and they saw us and came over. Anybody know where the second coming is in here? It is uh, chapter 2, and it is, um, it is in verse 12. No, it isn't. Uh, let, let, let's look at verse 10. Chapter 2, verse 10. Now this is what uh, a Peter S. Rockman would teach. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair, way, uh, my fair one, and come away. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of the birds has come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape, Give a good smell, rise, my love, my fair one, and come away. What time of year is that? Spring. It is the springtime. And so they teach that Jesus is coming for the, at the rapture in the spring. That's what they teach. There's all kinds of teachings. I'm just sharing what others teach or believe. That's spring and more than I was there for the southern now, now we get to that. Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere. When does the Lord come with all the feasts? When does he come? Aside from that, we're waiting to hear what? Trumpets. The trumpet. So it's the Feast of the Trumpet. When does that take place? Well, in the fall. That takes place in the fall. Are you talking about the rapture or the second coming? Uh, the, I would say the rapture. We're waiting for the hearing of the trumpet. They say he's going to come in the spring, and they'll use that. They'll, the people use those things as their proof text. Well, he can't come in the spring and the fall. In the fall, what two seasons are not mentioned in the Bible? By the way, just for fun, 
spring and fall. The spring and fall is not never mentioned in the Bible. What two what two seasons are meant are biblical? Baseball season and football season. <laughs> and baseball, but which are which seasons? Summer and winter. Summer and winter. Ba baseball. I mean, <laughs> you got me going. Summer and winter. Those are the only two seasons mentioned. Spring and fall are not mentioned. So it's just two seasons, summer and winter. Hunting season and fishing season. <laughs> yeah. So one group says he's coming in the spring. The other group says he's coming in the uh, uh, fall. Oh, and here's an interesting thing. I failed to bring this up, Joe. I should have. I, it, it escaped my mind. Turn, if you would, to 2 Thessalonians. Brother Paul brings this up once in a while to me. Well, let's go there. But let's just say this now while I'm thinking of it so I uh, don't forget. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, in fact, go, go with, uh, before we go there, go to Psalm 12. Psalm 12. This, this comes up. <coughs> Every other day. Let's read verses 5, 6, and 7. Psalm 12, verses 5, 6, and 7. I, I don't think I have to go uh, before that. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Then the topic really changes. Verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of fire purified seven times. Verse 7, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So if you look at verse 7, the pronoun, it is a pronoun, isn't it? The word them, that pronoun. What does the word them refer to? The words. Verse 6 or verse 5? Verse 6. All right, Joe says, that we're all saying it refers, it refers to verse 6. Spurgeon says it, rever it refers to the people before that, not verse 6. It refers to the people before that, the, the people, and not to the words of God. Which Psalm? Psalm 12. And if you uh, read Spurgeon's uh, 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 Treasury of David, th that's what he's going to say. It refers to the people. It doesn't refer to the word of God. Now, we're always taught it refers to the Word of God. And it'd be how you and I were taught English is that uh, the, the pronoun refers to the noun that's being used or the topic just before it. Spurgeon says, now these guys argue about this stuff. He says it refers to the people. We've, we're, we've been taught it refers to the Word of God, all right? as to that pronoun, okay? <coughs> I say it's the words of God, the word of God. It's in the immediate context, the word of God. Word I know, God. you're right. Now, stay in Psalm, we're going back to the Song of Solomon, but in the meantime, go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter two. Verse 7. Let's just go to verse 7. What does the word let mean? L-E-T. It is not archaic. Tender. Stop. Means to stop. Where is the term used? Today. It's used in tense. When you uh, hit the ball and it hits the net, it is called what? It's called a, I think it's called a let ball. I'm not in that, in, you know, with those people who, who, who normally plays tennis. Rich people. They have nothing else to do. They're playing tennis. 
be younger people and they're rich people. And then uh, I, I just it never interest me. Anybody know how to win at tennis? And to beat somebody that's better than you. No, Here's the deal. All you have to do is keep returning the ball. If you can just get it back over, you'll probably win. Uh, and you can beat somebody much better than you. So I learned that in college. I took tennis, and we, we took a class, you, you take classes to get by, because you want to, well, why is it that you take uh, electives and you try to find the easiest one you can? What is it you're trying to do? Anybody know what you're trying to do? You want to bring up your cue. You want to bring that up to get the, your grade point average up. And uh, I went, one, one time I went to Pensacola, we dropped Molly off for college, and I met a, a kid, he was, I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. And uh, I said, really? I said, uh, well, I haven't started yet, I'm starting this semester. We were on quarters, that I, he got, and he said, well, I, what I'm gonna first do, I'm gonna get all my electives out of the way. I didn't say anything, I just kind of looked at uh, This kid's never gonna graduate from engineering school. You want your electives down the road, you know, where you need a breather, <laughs> right? When you want to take a breath of fresh air, to have some kind of a break. But he was going to get that all out of the way first. So let's say he did that, and then he started in mechanical engineering. He's going to find out it's a rough road to hoe, <laughs> and he's already done all the easy stuff. And he probably graduated as a pronoun that you're out or something. Anyway, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity Now I could see I, I could see Joe our reason. Joe's heard some lectures on this from another Ruckmanite. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth, that means stop, will let, stop, until he be taken out of the way. Who is the he in reference to? What are we always talking? Huh? Nobody knows what we're talking about? Well, we've always been taught it's the Holy Spirit. But he's not mentioned anywhere from verse 1 on. You, you can't have nowhere. Not, you, you, to Holy Where Spirit. is the Holy Spirit mentioned to, for the he to refer to this now of the Holy Spirit? Nowhere. We always say the Holy Spirit has to be led out of the way. So then who is the he in reference to? Antichrist. It would be the wicked one, the Antichrist. You got the Antichrist and then the man of sin. And so the idea was that uh, one way to teach us if it's the Holy Spirit, it's at the rapture, we're removed and the Holy Spirit goes with us. Now we're out of the way and now the wicked one can be revealed. But it can't be that because the Holy Spirit's nowhere in the in the context of the verses. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. So, you can not be. You're not. Well, we're always taught that. You can't be a vacuum of the Holy Spirit. But He checks out. That's what we're taught, but is that true? So I, I'm just telling you what we're taught. So if it's the Antichrist, then how is the Antichrist taken out? What is what a deadly wound? With the deadly wound, what is that? Uh, three days and three nights that he imitates Christ, and he comes out of the grave. One of his heads. One of his uh, how many? Of how many heads? How about seven? How about seven heads? Yeah, that, 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 yeah. You can find verses about that. Yeah, and one one theory is that that he feedeth them uh, manna in the wilderness, and he feeds them with the heads of Leviathan. That, that's what he's going to He's going to chop that up and make it. They're going to have a big barbecue out there. <laughs> okay. All right. Back to the Song of Solomon. I brought it up because of the pronouns. 
My beloved is mine, I am his, and he feedeth among the lilies. So, uh, Christ is ours, my beloved is mine. The Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 3. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. Christ is ours, and we are Christ. His and ours. And then the other one, the third one. Song of Solomon 7.10. I don't want to stare at these verses and figure them out. Because when I read this, and then I always have to sit down and wait a minute, is she talking about him or is he talking about her? And sometimes it seems hard to follow. 7.10, come my beloved, let us go forth into the field, let us lodge in the villages. All right, we are totally Christ. Now, that's how those three things are interpreted. I am my beloved's, my beloved. Uh, he is mine, I am his, I am his, he is mine. I am his, he desires me. Isn't there a song we sing like that? Isn't there a hymn that, I am my beloved, he is mine? Isn't there, there there's a hymn we sing like that? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Song of Solomon 6.11. I went down in the... Oh, yeah. This is where we, uh, we say this is San Francisco. I went down into the Garden of Nuts to see the fruits of the valley and to see whether the vine flourisheth in the pomegranates, but the nuts and the fruits. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's just a play out of words. It has nothing to do with what I have on there in San Francisco, the nuts and the fruits. It's weird, it's, it's always been weird. They've always been around. No one is born that way. It is learned behavior and taught behavior. We know somebody that uh, is one of them, was, is one of them, and, uh, and uh, came out of a small little church, and uh, man, the whole thing went south, man. Awful, just awful, and, and the guy went berserk and did all kinds of weird things. What it means is there had to be somebody in that church, a neighbor, that was grooming kids. And it was just a church of less than 50 people. So say it, it, it's a big church, it can happen in a little church. Name a good word that's been perverted. Gay. There's nothing wrong with the word gay, but they went and perverted it. And they are violent people, they'll kill you. The rainbow. Hey, hey. Huh? The rainbow. Oh, the rainbow? Yeah, they perverted that. They, that's all perverted. And, and by the way, I wouldn't mess with them. <clears throat> uh, maybe even witness to them would be tough. But if you if you go after them militant, militant like they are, that they'll uh, they'll figure out how to get you. Pastor, I just found out Giant Eagle is uh, funding LGBTQ. Oh yeah, they're they're all they're, they're all jumping on the bandwagon. All of them. We do not do that. They, they, they actually provide the funding for the gay price. Yeah. I'd say that they all got devils. They got devils. And they know not what they do. And they know not what they do. It is, it's the sign of the last day. Is it the blush or is it devil? Pardon? Is it the blush or is it the devil? Uh, in the world, the flesh, and the devil, or all three. Yeah, all three. Uh, I know one preacher would say, well, let's not give the devil too much credit here, because the devil look around and he'll say, man, I got credit, I, I didn't even know I did that. You know? and, and he gave credit. He's just a boss devil, that's all. So, uh, well, by the way, but they do, they are possessed by them, demons, uh, devils. Every lost person is possessed. They are possessed. And where is that person? 
Anybody know? Zach, why don't we go there? Keep singing the songs on the Ephesians 2. Where in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, 2-2, two, two, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Right. They're all full of devils. All right. Our last one here, the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. He brought, he brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. There's a, kind of a nice verses that apply here. Unique, this is unique to this book. The Shu, we learned early, uh, last week, the Shulamite, that's the pet name for the girl. That's unique to this verse, only it appears one verse two times. Uh, that's all unique to the verse. She is black but comely. People may run there and say that uh, it's, a, it's a black girl. Uh, in the in this in this book, they play different roles. God plays the bar bridegroom. Israel plays the bride. Another one is Jesus is the bridegroom, and the church is the bride. Is how this is played out. Well, most people believe that it's really some, the song. Uh, Solomon plays the uh, groom, but. Uh, <coughs> These are the traditional two views. God is the bridegroom, Israel is the bride, and or Jesus is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. It is how it's traditionally uh, played out spiritually. Such as um, in the book of Esther, Ahasuerus is a lost man. Esther, uh, has access to that and plays the Holy Spirit, but Haman has uh, access to the heart of Ahasuerus, the, the Satan does. And Esther's main goal is to try to get who is Jesus in, in the book of Esther? Mordecai. Mordecai, and her effort is to get Mordecai into the throne. Haman is hanged on his own gallows at 75 feet, and then eventually Mordecai then has access through the power of the Holy Spirit into the heart of a Ahasuerus. All right, so those are the two different views uh, that are generally taught out of the Song of Solomon. Uh, the one I heard a sermon about, and, is, and, and I use that sermon here, is that the girl is at the altar and she's waiting and she's reluctant to believe she doesn't want to marry uh, King Solomon. She wants her lover, which would be Jesus, and it's Jesus that shows up for the wedding. He's the one that comes. Somehow uh, the king is cast aside and the one she wants to marry is the one that shows up. Uh, Solomon the bride, there is the shepherd. In Solomon and the shepherd are not two of the same people. All right, and that, that's it. It's quarter to the hour. And uh, we will move on to the book of Isaiah next week. And there will be no service again tonight. I, uh, I'm tired. I don't know if I'm going to continue Sunday evening service. I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to stop that or not. I, I don't know what we're going to do. I do want to use up and make and get a hundred signs done. And I do want to get all the rubber stamp material. We got enough rubber stamp material over there to make enough rubber stamps from now to Doomsday. We ordered a tub, and it didn't come in. We ordered another tub, and finally the other tub finally came in. And that, But that's been a while. We want to use up this material before it's shot. Oh, so all I'm asking is somebody to go over there and click, click. It's a click, click, and I'll cut them, because we have people who want to assemble. And we want to get that done. Anyway.
preaching in 15 minutes. 